Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Whitaker. I'm a photographer from Seattle, Washington, and today's video is 10 tips on how I personally stay motivated and inspired. For me, I am introverted. A lot of people don't believe me when I say that. The only thing that really classifies you as an introvert versus an extrovert is where you find energy. So do you draw energy from recharging and being by yourself at the end of the night, or do you find energy from going out um, and spending a lot of time with a group of people? For me, it's <laughs> definitely the first one. So therefore, I'm not going to feel inspired and motivated if I'm constantly out there networking. These are tips that I have found helpful for my own personality type. So my first tip would be exercise. I exercise four to five times a week. It really improves my mental health and well-being. And I find that the rest of my day goes awesome because I was able to spend time for myself. It's not only a short-term thing for the day. This is also obviously something long-term that's going to make you just feel overall way better. My next tip would be journaling. I think that journaling is something so healthy and so great and I don't think enough people do it. I also think that if you're going through something, whether it's with a friend or family member, if you're able to write it all out, you're going to find that when you have to go do your job, whether it's work or a photo shoot, it should help you be able to kind of have that taken off your mind because you have it all released on paper and you'll find that your mind is a lot less cluttered up. Okay, so my next tip would be when you have to actually go out and work. Wear clothes that you feel good in. Wearing something that you personally like will make you feel really good and if you put that in combination with exercise from the inside you feel good, the outside you know you look good, you're gonna probably find that you have a better experience and you're gonna also feel more confident. So it's not so much about being vain and like, oh I look good. It's more about your confidence level and you're gonna find that you probably will feel a lot more motivated to do your work and you're gonna be able to perform better. <laughs> My fourth tip for staying inspired would be to keep a Pinterest board of all your inspiration. <laughs> you can start curating images that inspire you. And from there, you'll probably notice a common theme. Like for me, I might be really into specific color. So for instance, right now, I really love like um, goldenrod yellow and so I might see that I have a lot of that goldenrod color and I'll make a mini board from there or I might want to do something with mirrors I notice my Pinterest board has a lot of mirrors I'll make a mini board from there then by breaking it down into smaller boards I'm able to accomplish each board and task and do a shoot for each and it's not as overwhelming as having one big inspiration board you'll find that if you have it broken down into little bite-sized sessions, then you're probably more likely to plan it out. My fifth tip is to find a stylist that you really love, that has a similar aesthetic to you or somebody who can create your aesthetic, somebody that you also vibe with. My next tip is something that I've suggested before and people have kind of come at me sideways about and disagreed with me about, but I personally think that a lot of you benefited from it, so I'm going to say it again, and that would be to unfollow Instagram accounts, Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts that make you feel some kind of bitterness or jealousy. These accounts can be anything from a public figure to another photographer. I think that if you're constantly comparing yourself in an unhealthy way to other people, that's dangerous for you. Obviously, there's always room to improve and you should be following people that inspire you. So if you find that you're following a lot of photographers that you kind of constantly compare yourself and you're like, oh, if only I lived in New York, if only I could go to LA all the time, if only I had a Mark IV, if I only had this or that or, you know, whatever, if I could only shoot with this model, if you constantly are like feeling like that instead of wow you know that's so awesome they're so creative i'm so inspired i think what they're doing is interesting that's the people you should follow not people that you're constantly comparing yourself to the accounts you should be following are ones that make you want to do better and improve but not in an unhealthy way that's coming from a jealous place. My next tip would be to take your time when you're on location shooting. Whether it's with a client or with a model. When it's with a client you should eat before obviously but bring water with you and drink it. They're not gonna mind. You can say okay let me go just look through the images you know I have to go adjust something on my camera. Let them take a break. They'll just be on their phone for a couple minutes. You're just going to chill, kind of look through your images, see what you're going to improve on, but don't feel like for whatever reason that's not allowed because you want to be able to deliver the best images possible to your clients. And if that means taking a two minute break, do it. If you're with a model and especially if it's like a collab shoot, then you even have more wiggle room and you can book the shoots, all the shoots 
to be able to have enough kind of um, wiggle room where you are able to take a couple minutes for a break. Tip would be to start writing everything down and making a list. So if you're anything like me, I love notebooks. My favorite are the Moleskin two packs. I get them at the Moleskin store. I think they're about $20 for two. And I just write everything down because kind of like with journaling, you're able to put it all down, kind of have it off of your mind for a second until you have to look back at it and accomplish the tasks. There's something so satisfying if about crossing stuff off of your to-do list instead of having it on your phone or your Trello where it just disappears. All right, so my other tip would be relating to Christians. This one is so simple. Just to seek the Lord for inspo. Yo, whenever I'm running dry, I say, God, please like give me an idea or a way to get an idea. And he'll either be like, yo, you haven't been to the gym in three days or three weeks or three months or three years. I'm like, shoot, true. The last time I went was 1993. I was born in 1995. I just seek the Lord. I spend time um, reading the Bible every single morning, doing devotionals, and whenever I am constantly seeking out God, I usually get a lot of inspiration. And not only inspiration, but also a better attitude overall, which is always um, necessary as humans. My last tip would be to spend time with more people who are outside of your industry. So I'm going to use photography as an example, but cultivating friendships with people outside of that circle is a really healthy and great life skill to have because not everyone's a photographer, but that doesn't mean you can only be friends with other people who are creative. Obviously, I feel like this is a no-brainer, but I think that having common ground with people, such as photography, or maybe if you're a florist or you're a model, having common ground, that's a great starting place for friendship. But make sure you have other things in common, whether it's your lifestyle, your morals, maybe your religion. That's how you're going to be able to build genuine friendships and relationships with other people. So those are my 10 tips on how I personally stay motivated and inspired creatively. I hope that this video helped you guys out. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more photography and social media videos. You can find me on Instagram at Jessica Whitaker and Twitter at Jessica Lee 206 and I'll see you later.